Bryophytes are commonly known as amphibians. Why? Because these plants live in moist soil, but they require water for sexual reproduction. And 3D produces what? Produces motile, that is biflagellate anthrozoids, whereas archegonia produce a single non-motile egg. So during sexual reproduction, the male and the female gametes are produced either by the same thallus or by the different thallus. Dear students, welcome back to session 3 of this chapter called Plant Kingdom. Hope you remember in my last session, we started off with the classes of algae that is Chlorophyceae, Pheophyceae and Rhodophyceae. As you know, the whole of the plant kingdom is divided into five main groups, algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. So we have already learnt about algae. So now let us move on to the study of the next group of plants that is called bryophytes. You know bryophytes are referred to as amphibians of the plant kingdom. Just like a frog goes for water for reproducing, even bryophytes need the water as a medium for reproduction, hence the name the uh, amphibians of the plant kingdom. Now let us study about the characteristic features of bryophytes. Why these are so very different and why are they grouped into a different group called, freo, uh, called bryophytes. So let us understand the characteristic features. They are photosynthetic, chiefly terrestrial, non-vascular plants that reproduce by spores. As I said, they are photosynthetically chief, that is photosynthetic, they are photosynthetic, chiefly terrestrial and non-vascular plants. What do you mean by non-vascular plants? Vascular means those plants which have xylem and phloem. Those plants which have xylem and phloem as their Vascular tissues, such plants are called vascular plants. I think all of you know that xylem is a water conducting tissue and phloem is a food conducting tissue. But these vascular tissues, namely xylem and phloem, is absent in bryophytes, hence they are called as non-vascular plants. So they reproduce by what? By spores, right? Next, as I said, bryophytes are commonly known as amphibians. Why? Because these plants live in moist soil but they require water for sexual reproduction. Just like frogs, you know, frogs, female frog goes to the water to lay eggs and the male frog sheds the sperms on the eggs and the process of fertilization is external. So in a similar way, even the bryophytes go to the water or require water for sexual reproduction. Hence, they are also referred to as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. Here, the plant body of bryophyte is called thallus. As I said, here you can see the beautiful picture, right? So here, you can, uh, this is a beautiful picture of Marcantia. Marcantia and Rixia are the two very important examples, liverworts, mosses, all this belong to bryophytes. As I keep telling, explain the concepts with suitable examples. Examples are of utmost importance for the concepts to be understood. So moving on to the, as I said, the plant body of bryophyte is called thallus. Why it is called thallus? You cannot differentiate the plant body into root, shoot, leaf, etc. It is just undifferentiated mass of cells called thallus, right, which is prostrate or erect and attached to the substratum. So they need something, some attachment, a substance uh, to which it attaches is called as a substratum. So I repeat, bryophytes are the second group of plants belonging to the plant kingdom, which are commonly referred to as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. They are photosynthetic, chiefly terrestrial found on moist soil, and they are non-vascular plants because of the absence of the vascular tissues, namely the xylem and Phloem, as you know, xylem and phloem are called vascular tissues, are conducting tissues, where xylem is a water conducting tissue and phloem is a food conducting tissue. 
and as i said why are they called as amphibians of the plant kingdom they uh, they are usually terrestrial found in moist soil but require water for uh, sexual reproduction hence they are commonly referred to as amphibians of the plant kingdom then the plant body as i said of bryophyte is a thallus which is undifferentiated uh, it is not differentiated into root stem and leaf and they and the thallus may be prostrate or erect or sometimes it may be attached to the substratum now let us move on to the some more important characteristic features of bryophytes so they have root like structures called rhizoids because as i said the plant body here it is thallus it is not having a root stem or a leaf so what are the root like structures in case of bryophytes called they are called as rhizoids so they are the roots in case of the bryophytes and here the predominant plant body is a haploid gametophyte that produces gametes here the predominant plant body of bryophyte is what haploid gametophyte that is uh, that produces gametes the very word itself will tell gametophyte means what that which produces gametes and the gametophyte has male sex organ called anthridia and the female sex organ called archegonia very important Uh, words to be learned and to be remembered anthridia is a male sex organ and archegonia is the female sex organ then anthridia as i said it is a male sex organ produces biflagellate anthrozoids motile anthrozoids which are the male gametes and archegonia which is a female organ uh, produces a single non motile egg so male anthrozoids produce produces what the uh, produces what produces biflagellate anthrozoids whereas archegonia produces a no single non motile egg so i repeat so they have a root like structures called what rhizoids and the predominant body of bryophyte is what haploid gametophyte that produces what gametes and the gametophyte has what male sex organ called anthridia and the female sex organ called archegonia anthridia produces what produces motile that is biflagellate anthrozoids whereas archegonia produces a single non motile egg now what are as i said uh, it needs water for sexual reproduction so here the anthrozoids that is the biflagellate anthrozoids are released into the water where they come in contact with archegonium just like a frog female frog goes to the water and lay eggs and the male frog uh, will come and shed the sperm so in a similar way here the anthrozoids are released into water where they come in contact with archegonium later the anthrozoid fuses with the egg to produce a haploid zygote so that is how the process of sexual reproduction takes place since that is a reason as i said why bryophytes are called the amphibians of the plant kingdom because they require water for sexual reproduction where the anthrozoids are released into the water where they will come in contact with the archegonium the fusion will take place resulting in the process of formation of a diploid zygote and this zygote that is formed after the fusion of the anthrozoid with the archegon that is the single egg of archegonium um develops into what diploid sporophyte develops into diploid sporophyte that is differentiated into what basal foot elongated seta and bulbous capsule so the zygote develops into a diploid sporophyte that is differentiated into a basal foot elongated setae and bulbous capsule here some cells of the capsule produce the haploid spores after meiosis as you know meiosis is a reduction division which germinates to produce the haploid gametophyte so as i already said the predominant stage here it is what haploid gametophyte so some cells of the capsule produce haploid spores after meiosis which ger germinates to produce what haploid gametophyte then the sporophyte is not free living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte so it is like alternation they exhibit a very important phenomenon called alternation of Gen, uh, generation that is sporophyte is followed by gametophyte so the sporophyte is not free living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte hence bryophytes exhibit 
alternation of generation so i repeat the anthrozoids are released in water where they come in contact with archegonium and the anthrozoid fuses with the egg single uh, egg of the archegonia to produce what diploid zygote then the zygote develops into what Ziploid, diploid sporophyte that is differentiated into what as i said it is a thallus body uh, it, it is differentiated into basal foot uh, elongated seta and bulbous capsule and here some cells of the capsule produce what haploid spores after meiosis which germinates to produce what haploid gametophyte the sporophyte as i said it is not free living it is found attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte so obviously they exhibit what alternation of generation move as i said thallus so here dorsi ventrally flattened body here you can see the dorsi ventrally flattened body here you can see the liverworts dorsi ventrally flattened body and it is not differentiated into root and stem and leaf as i said what is thallus body uh, the one which is not differentiated into root stem and leaf and the sporophyte means what what do you mean by sporophyte spore producing plant body so what do you mean by thallus try to understand certain terms and terminologies then only you'll be able to understand the lesson so thallus means what dorsi ventrally flattened body and it is not differentiated into root stem and leaf what is sporophyte spore producing plant body what is gametophyte gamete producing plant body the bryophytes are divided into what namely into liverworts and mosses so what is thallus dorsi ventrally flattened plant body uh, which is not differentiated into root stem and leaf sporophyte the very word itself will tell you sporo spore producing plant body gametophyte gamete gamete producing plant body so as i said the whole of the bryophyte is divided into liverworts and mosses now let us understand about the liverworts what are liverworts the plant body how are they what are the characteristic features of liverworts so it is a thallus the plant body is thallus and dorsi ventrally flattened here you can see the liverworts here you can see the beautiful picture of liverworts so here the plant body is thallus and dorsi ventrally flattened so they have two surfaces dorsal surface and ventral surface which is flat hence you call it as dorso ventrally flattened and vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation so if it is cut into pieces each piece has the capacity to develop into a new plant then asexual reproduction takes place by the process of formation of gamete developed uh, gamete means it is called like internal uh, buds so gamete developed in the small receptacle called gamete cups present on the thallus and each gamete detached from the parent thallus undergoes germination and develops into a new gametophyte so what are gamete then how do we define the word called gamete gamete are green multicellular asexual buds develop in small receptacles found on liverworts thallus so what are liverworts the plant body here it is in liverworts the plant body is called thallus and it is dorso ventrally flattened and vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation and asexual reproduction as i said will also take place through what gamete formation and what are gamete gamete are green multicellular asexual buds develop in small receptacles found in liverworts then small receptacle as i said called gamma cups present on the thallus and each gamete detached from the parent thallus undergoes ger undergoes germination and develops into a new gametophyte so what happens during uh, sexual reproduction then during sexual reproduction the male and the female gametes are produced by the same thallus so here the same thallus the plant body thallus produces both the male and the female gametes or in different thallus also so during sexual reproduction the male and the female gametes are produced either by the same thallus or by the different thallus and after fertilization after fertilization of the male gamete with the female gamete it develops into diploid sporophyte so sexual reproduction is by the process of formation of male gametes and female gametes either by the same thallus or by different thallus and after the fusion forms a zygote called what it develops into a diploid sporophyte here the sporophyte develops on the gametophyte and it is different as i said the sporophyte is develops on the gametophyte and it is differentiated again into what basal foot elongated setae and bulbous capsule 
So here, the capsule of sporophyte produces spores after meiosis, right? Uh, which undergo what germination and develop into a haploid gametophyte. Examples you can give example of Marcantia and Rixia. Here you can see Marcantia is the example. So during sexual reproduction, the male and the female gametes are produced by the same thallus or in different thallus. And after fertilization between male and female gamete, it develops into a diploid sporophyte. And the sporophyte develops on the gametophyte and it is differentiated into what? Basal foot, elongated setae and bulbous capsule. And capsule of sporophyte produce what? Spores after meiosis which undergoes what? Germination and develops into haploid gametophyte. What are the classical examples you are going to give? Marcantia and Rixia. Now let us study about, that was about the liver board. So what about mosses? Mosses, here you can see the moss. It is like a green carpet. Mosses are usually referred to like, you know, they appear like green carpet and the predominant stage of life cycle of moss is the gametophyte. There it was sporophyte, here it is gametophyte, which consists of two stages such as one is called the protonema stage and the other one is called as the leafy stage. As I said, mosses, that is the, dom the predominant stage of the life cycle of moss is the gametophyte, which consists of two stages such as protonema stage and leafy stage. Here, the first stage as we call it as the protonema, which develops directly from a spore. Whereas the second stage called as the leafy stage develops from the secondary protonema. See, as I said, it has two stages. One is called the protonema stage. The other one is called the leafy stage. The first stage, that is the protonema, will develop directly from the spore. Whereas the second stage develops from the secondary protonema as what? As lateral bud. And it consists of what? Upright, slender axis bearing spirally arranged leaves. So what are mosses? The predominant stages, these are the type of bryophytes which almost look like a green carpet and the predominant stage of the life cycle of moss is the gametophyte which consists of two stages that is the protonema stage and the leafy stage. The protonema stage develops from the from the from, from a spore whereas the second stage called the leafy stage develops from the secondary protonema. Hope you have understood about bryophytes. So almost we are through with three very important groups of plants that is algae, that is two very important groups of plants that is algae and bryophytes. So I'll be back in the coming session with the remaining uh, groups of this plant kingdom. Till then goodbye and thank you.